Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. Welcome back to a new video and a new little shooting area, a new little studio. I put this together for maybe 75 bucks, if that, from, you know, really cheap wood at Lowe's, and I'm super happy with it. So now I've got a place where I can just set the camera up, shoot, and edit. And that's what I'm gonna be doing, because I've got a lot of things to edit. I've been printing, 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 painting, all that stuff, but I haven't been editing. So we're gonna start getting some of these videos out on a regular basis like I used to. Today's video is a little bit different. What we're gonna be seeing is a presentation that Clay uh, Parker, Uncle Jesse, and I gave at the Rochester Maker Fair a couple weeks ago, it was probably three weeks ago actually, where we were on the main stage, uh, which was really exciting. And there's about 50, 60 people out there and we talked about 3D printing and cosplay. And it was a nice little presentation we put together. We talked to people, then we did a little Q&A. And what this is, is the presentation. I recorded it, and then I just dropped some sli the slides in that we used in the video so you could sort of follow along with that. It was super cool, it was great to be there. The Rochester Maker Fair is awesome, I love it. It's the second year I've set up there. It gets tons of people, and I really, really enjoy going. And getting able to do this talk with uh, Clay was real, real fun. It's always a joy to hang out with him. He's a fantastic guy, a great maker, and in just, you know, a superhero in the community as far as sharing his knowledge and getting information out there. So I really hope you enjoy this. If you do, click like, subscribe, hit that little bell. It'll tell you when the next video is coming out, and they will be coming out regularly. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the projects that I'm going to be working on in videos to come. So without further ado, on to the video. All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. And we're going to be talking to you guys today about 3D printing and cosplay. We are very excited to be talking with you guys today about this. My name is Clayton Parker. I also go by the name Uncle Jesse online. And I'm Kevin Volo. I am from 3D Printed Props. I also go by Max's dad. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to be talking to you guys today about is, uh, again, 3D printing and how we incorporate that into cosplay and replica prop making and a lot of statues and all sorts of craziness that we're heavily, heavily involved in uh, with making. And a lot of the other components that we will probably dive into as well a little bit is the process of also making and sharing whatever you've made online, whether it's through video format on YouTube, or Instagram, or Twitter, or Facebook, or emailing your friends, or on forums, um, just making sure that you share what you create so that others can learn from it. Yeah, because pretty much everything you're going to be seeing here today that we've worked on, we have downloaded from online, or we've gotten from friends, it, you know, it's stuff just doesn't appear, people share it, and it really Except, except that he actually knows how to design stuff, so he can actually design and 3D print a lot of stuff. That's right. Not me, though. Uh, so, Kevin, here, why don't you talk about some of your, your projects here? Here, I'll give you the, the clip as well. Green is full. Um, this is uh, one of the first sort of full cosplays I've worked on, and it's um, Rustler from Fortnite. I can't believe I blanked out on that. But uh, this is something I, I, I like to do where I work on the helmet, which is 3D printed. Uh, and then the rest of it, and the gun is 3D printed, but the rest of it you sort of have to put together. You have to do the research to uh, see what coat you should get, uh, the cloth. Uh, I put the backpack together, and that stuff is foam uh, parts that I found in my dad's workshop and a license plate that I bought on eBay. You can buy license plates on eBay. That's something who knew, right? Um, this is the first helmet I worked on, and it's a um, Star-Lord helmet. Really proud of this one. I uh, had to take all the pieces, uh, take everything apart, strip it down so that I could really sand and make it look really, really sharp, do research to get the right eyes, and, and sort of move forward from there. But, it's my favorite one. I, I, I have also made a Star Lord helmet, and yours looks about a thousand times more. So it probably took a thousand times longer. So I, <laughs> that's, the, that's the bad thing about these things. They don't just look great. You have to make them look great. 
Well, uh, actually, can you go back? I think there's a back button. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I loved about your helmet build here for the Star Lord mask is, if I remember correctly, it actually didn't fit your head. How did you solve that that issue? Yeah, I've got a big head, and uh, I printed it, and I painted it, and I wired it, and then I and then last step, of course, when to put it on. And you should do that early in the process. So yes. if you're taking notes. Much, much, much earlier. Here's the first tip. Yeah. Uh, measure, remeasure, print, screw it up, measure again, yeah. and reprint. So then what I did was I said, this doesn't print, or it doesn't fit. I got my son's uh, basketball. We play like basketball indoors with these. The real basketballs, but they're small. So I deflated it, and I stuck it in the helmet. And then I used a heat gun and I warmed up the body of the, the bottom of it. And I you know, I pumped the basketball up little by little while I heated. And then I put it in the refrigerator. And it hardened and then it fit. One, one thing that if you're not familiar with 3D printing, um, the process, we'll, we'll cover this here in, in just a few minutes at a, at a high level. It involves heating up plastic. So the end results are a plastic material. And if you take a heat gun, as Kevin just said, you can actually warp the parts. So there are some materials that you can print with that are heat resistant or more heat resistant than others. Uh, we typically work with a substance called PLA that uh, is very easy to work with for the most part, easy to print with, and uh, you can heat form it as well if needed. It's very melty. Yeah, just don't leave it out in the sun. Yeah, or in your car. Uh, this was, uh, this is Red Hood, and this was a really another fun one for me. Um, again, these are files I got from, uh, he's a, a maker named uh, Colonius, uh, his name's Pete, and uh, his is stuff on Etsy and a uh, thing of hers, we'll talk about that later. But uh, this is one that just, uh, a simple helmet, but took a long time, because you've got a sand, everyone says, how did you make it look so smooth? We'll talk about it later, but you got a sand and sand, and sand some and more sand. sand. And sand, lots of sand, and then paint. So, uh, and then take really nice photos of it. Uh, so this was a really fun one, and I love looking up, you know, finding the eyes, doing the research, um, just how to make it look the best. Like, yeah. Actually, uh, this is the you have a few of them that have the light up eyes. Does that I like it. man on stage as well? Yeah, that uh, is off the side. Does that light up as well? It does, but it doesn't have those. I just want because Ant Man doesn't. Has the uh, just red? You can't really tell here, but they light up. Where do you? Uh, because I have not worked with those illuminated eyes before. Yes. What are you? What are you doing? Uh, I get them on eBay. Somebody, if you Google helmet LED lights, they're like eight bucks for the full, the, the wired with the battery and everything. Really? Yeah. Eight not bucks. just not just the, the LED. The LEDs, the wire, the battery. Alright, got everything since it was. Have you done a video on that? I did. Okay. Oh, and in case you guys didn't know, we have YouTube channels and information's on the bottom. I show how I build everything, so does uh, Clay, how, how we build things and, and how we paint them and sand them. We also like to steal each other's work. Yeah. The sanding videos are fascinating. <laughs> Watch those sanding <laughs> No, we don't show that. It's too boring. Um, this is another uh, mask, Drift. And uh, again, the really shiny, highly sort of non-weathered ones, they're fun, but they're also tedious because you've got to, again, sand, and for this you have multiple paint colors, so you're taping things off, painting, waiting for the dry, and then sort of rinse and repeat. Uh, and that, uh, that hoodie is 3D printed as well? The hoodie is 3D printed. It's a new technology. No, it's from Wish.com. It was okay. $2. Did, um, I was gonna say, who who is taking your photos because they look about a thousand times better than my photos? If I'm in them, it's uh, it's amazing photography, and it's just a fantastic person overall. Uh, it's that lady right there who's laughing hysterically. <laughs> my wife, Judy. Uh, how do I how do I approach my wife to get her involved? Because well, her we'll approach is, please keep this all in the basement, yeah. not bring it upstairs, and disrupt the rest of oh, the I, 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 Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff upstairs I've been asked to take down stairs. Don't, don't worry, that happens to me, but she likes to see the final product. You know, she likes to see that. She likes to help out. I cannot spray paint in the house, 
Do not, uh, yeah, here's a big here's a big one. Do not spray paint inside the house. No. Uh, do not spray paint inside your garage with the door closed. No. Even, I would almost, don't even spray paint in the garage with the door open. It'll still stink up your entire garage yeah. and potentially your house for a solid day. Yeah. And FYI, airbrush, if you're gonna airbrush, apparently that still smells. I didn't know that was gonna happen. And uh, yeah, she, uh, she's Water. laughing now. But she was not laughing then. Water down some of her pants. And then I also do I, I a bunch of comments, but I do other types of props. Uh, uh, this is a, a Rorschach's uh, Gatling gun, not Gatling gun, no. grappling. grappling gun uh, from Watchmen. And you know, so I like to do small props too that are, you know, helmets or. I mean, you know. one thing that's I, I love that you included this in, uh, in the slides here is just that. I mean, from my standpoint, I do a ton of printing of helmets. Like I, there's something about printing a helmet and making a helmet and putting it on display that I just absolutely love. And I still, I, I don't go, I think you just do an amazing job of making these smaller props that you can use. And uh, did you, was this something that you found online or did you design this one? I actually um, worked with somebody, uh, this was before I knew how to do that. There's a droid running, running around the floor here, by the way. A little mouse, a little mouse droid. Uh, this is actually before I knew how to do this. Uh, so I actually had a, uh, somebody, I commissioned that. There he is. That's awesome. <laughs> but that's a commission piece, actually. Uh, and this is um, just, I wanted to scare everybody. Just a scary picture. This is, uh, I don't just 3D print uh, stuff. I also make stuff traditionally. So this is going to be, uh, uh, a cosplay for a guy from Doom Patrol. So it's, you know, bandages and I'm wrapping up a face mask and working on the goggles, stuff like that, buying the coats and sort of outfitting myself and then taking weird pictures in my office. And my son goes, oh, oh. <laughs> But it, it's, it's important to know, I mean, there's so many different ways you can go about, if you're interested in cosplaying or if you like a particular character, you can go about making something from that character to cosplay as them. Uh, I started off when I was doing my prop building with Pepakura. Right, you did yeah. No, I haven't. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with what that is, but it's basically the process of taking paper, cutting it out, and gluing it together to make a replica prop. And then you put all sorts of different prop products on top of it to strengthen it, and then sand it, and all this other stuff. It's sort of like a rudimentary version of of 3D printing, and it's even lends itself to working with foam, which I know, yep. I mean, it's probably the most popular form of cosplay and, and making replica props or costumes is using foam. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience with foam, and I, I personally love 3D printing. So. Yeah, I started using foam, and then it literally I saw a couple of videos and I bought a 3D printer, because I was like, I'm done with foam. Do that. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be talking about this later. Once you go down the route of 3D printing, it's uh, it, it's it's all downhill from there. Um, so again, uh, my name is Uncle Jesse. So again, I I probably am most obsessed with Magneto from the X Men comics. Uh, not the most recent iterations of Magneto from the movies. I'm talking Jim Lee style Magneto from the 90s. That's when I was uh, heavy heavy into the X Men comics. So I had the lovely opportunity to meet with Adam Savage and the Tested team at New York Comic Con this past October, which was absolutely amazing. So I got to show them off my mostly 3D printed costume. Uh, this Magneto costume was also the first time that I've really done sewing, which was a whole entire learning process in itself. Uh, but one thing that I was really cool about this that I liked about the costume is, uh, one, the helmet just is exactly what I've always wanted from a Magneto costume is that really great looking classic helmet. Um, but a lot of the other components, basically all of the other purple components that are on the costume, those are all 3D printed and that's the raw 3D print in itself. So here, if I go to the next slide here, you can see a close up of a number of these where I really didn't go through the process that we're gonna tell you guys about, which is, going through and finishing and sanding and smoothing and painting, 
all that other stuff. I took the raw PLA print that was this beautiful majestic purple from Ziltec and I just applied clear coat to it and I wanted to show that off as a raw print. I did end up weathering it a little bit with some acrylic paints. That's about it. It was just a matter of gluing with elastic or using magnets. Since it was a night needle project, I had to use magnets in this as well. Uh, one other fun fact, the crest on the helmet uh, was magnetically attached, and I did end up breaking that at the New York Comic Con. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was an unfortunate accident. Thankfully, I had made two copies of them, though, just in the event that one broke. Oh, it, it broke. I mean, it cracked. Oh, yeah. No, it completely broke. Uh, this is my, probably my most popular video that I have online. It's a Deadpool face shell. So I made this a few years ago, right after I think the first Deadpool movie came out. And uh, this is, what, what a face shell is, is typically something that you wear underneath a mask. So if you're doing Deadpool or Spider-Man, you'll typically see cosplayers or even the actors wearing a face shell underneath the fabric mask. And it gives you that really nice shape to your face when wearing that mask. So all of this was 3D printed here, and I'm showing how, uh, at the time, this was very early on where I did not have really large 3D printers, so I was combining multiple 3D printed parts together using glue and then sanding those all together here using wood filler, and we'll again talk about a bunch of all this. But what was really cool about this is that the eyes could pop in and off, and I was able to use, again, magnets incorporate those into this because it has different facial expressions if you're familiar with the Deadpool movie. So I did not end up having an actual fabric mask to go over this, but it was just a really, really cool, fun project, and it was probably one of the first times that I had made a, um, actually, sorry, I, I did have a first iteration of a full helmet, but this is probably the first or second time that something like this absolutely blew up online for me. Um, the next is, um, I have a 3D printed Thor Ragnarok helmet, and uh, this, this I, I was immediately drawn to the helmet from the first trailer that came out for Thor Ragnarok, and the folks over at Do3D, which is do3d.com, they make a lot of 3D printable files that you can purchase from them. So I went off and got this from them and started making this helmet, and this is, again, one of the first, this is a fully 3D printed, the entire helmet is 3D printed in one piece. The ears were 3D printed separately that I could then slide on. I actually ended up making a few different iterations of this as well, which was, uh, which was pretty fun. And then I ended up wearing this to my very first Comic-Con. This was actually my first full-on cosplay as well. So the helmet was 3D printed, the shoulders were 3D printed, I had a leg piece that was 3D printed as well. Uh, but it was a really fun project for me to put it together and show off. Uh, these were just a few other examples of some other projects that I had done. I just wanted to throw a collage here. Uh, two of these, the Red Stormtrooper helmet is a raw 3D print, and I still think to this day that it looks really cool just left alone, no sand or anything like that. Uh, you got Yondu Spin, which is a really fun project. I ended up painting my face blue for that video. Uh, <laughs> which my wife loved because I completely messed up our bathroom with blue body paints. Uh, that's a, the, the Rainbow Pony Mask is just a really cool visual file. And then uh, obviously you got Black Panther down there in the corner. And funny enough, the, the Black Panther helmet, and it's, it's weird for me looking at stage, but not see what you guys are looking at there, um, is not sanded really. It's just, I, I went off and painted that and added some silver accents. So I think what we wanted to do now, after sort of getting a background of a little bit of what we've we've done as an internet project, I want to talk about 3D printing in general. This might be for some of you the first time you've heard about 3D printing. Uh, one of the biggest questions that we get, you know, probably with every almost every video that we posted, is what 3D printer should I buy? And normally that involves, well, it depends on what you're looking to do, what kind of projects you're looking to do. If you're interested in cosplay, there are two super friendly printers that have huge communities behind them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the CR10, the available CR10, that's the first uh, 3D printer I bought. I, I, I still have the basic one, and it's a workhorse. It's 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by seven. It, 
basically, let me translate, that could print a full helmet easily I print, without having to cut it. If you go down to my booth uh, downstairs, wherever it is downstairs, um, 98, uh, every helmet was painted, printed on one of these CR tags. Full size, no gluing together or anything like that. You can print a lot of stuff on CR tag. Um, cheap, they have great communities on Facebook, uh, builder groups that you can have, you know, get help from. Parts are really inexpensive to get to sort of fix, because yeah. I've had to fix it. They really break down. I mean, both of these, uh, a lot of the parts are interchangeable. Yeah. The one that you're seeing as well, the smaller one, the Ender 3, is a great starter machine for anybody looking to just Maybe they're not necessarily looking to build full helmets, or they don't want to invest, you know, three hundred, four hundred dollars in a, a CR10. The Ender 3 is amazing, such an amazing yeah. machine, and they're both really simple to put together and get up and running. It's about a half an hour or less to get them up yeah. and running. And if you get the Ender 3, you can still print helmets. Yeah. You're just going to print them in sections, uh, like quarters, and then have to glue together. That takes a little bit more time, but you know, you're saving yourself three hundred dollars. Yeah, really all. Awesome. Christmas is coming So we also wanted to just give you a, a quick background of exactly how does this work. And so in simple terms, you can either create a 3D file, there are multiple 3D file uh, software, 3D softwares out there. Uh, Fusion 360, as I know the one that you, you are typically using. I use that one because uh, this is huge for me. It's free. Uh, it doesn't cost anything if you're a student or if you're a teacher. Or if you're a hobbyist. Or if you're a hobbyist, yes. Yeah, so I think yeah. pretty much everyone. Everybody, yes. Yeah. And it's it's um, fairly simple to use as far as 3D programs go. I mean, it's it's always hard to wrap your head around your drawing. Whereas to learn any any sort of stuff. I mean, there's going to be a learning curve. For yeah. Some of these. But it has tons and since it's free, it has tons and tons of videos on uh, YouTube on how to do certain things. So. I will regularly be working on a model, not know how to do some kind of thing, and I'll just type that into YouTube and there's 10 videos on how to do that. What's cool as well is uh, I do the most minimalistic amount of 3D design work, and I use Tinkercad, which is made by the same parent company, Autodesk, and it's an all web-based free software as well, and it, that is extremely easy to use. And what's also really, really cool is over the past year or two, there is a lot of mobile 3D design software. So I have an iPad at home and an Apple Pencil, and there are apps now that you can 3D design on your iPad, which is so wild, really wild. But what will end up happening is you get a 3D file, it's typically an STL file, and then you have another software on your computer called a slicer. That's gonna tell the 3D printer how fast it needs to print, at what quality should it print at, uh, how you know it, if it's uh, if it needs to have an infill to it, which is how thick should it be on the inside, how much of an infill you're going to print it at, or what temperature you need to print it at, because it needs to heat, heat up the plastic, and then you actually send that file, which is a G code, to your 3D printer. And once it's in your 3D printer, what ends up happening here is you have your material, which is your typically your filament, and it's your PLA or ABS or PETG, whatever that might be. And it's going to bring that into your extruder, and that's going to heat it up to where it's melting. And it's basically just going to go back and forth, back and forth, to build the actual product that you're looking to make. It's a pretty wild process, to be honest. I mean, it is. It's line by line. Well, one thing that we don't have mentioned in here is that 3D printing still to this day is not quick. It's uh, if I want to print a helmet, it's going to take at least three days. Minimum, yeah. Uh, depending on how fast and all that that I'm printing it at, yeah. the quality. Yeah. And uh, here's an example. This is the actual nozzle that the the heated up plastic will come through, and that's like called the first layer. So it goes through the tube. This I'm going to go point why I don't know. But the silvery metal box thing there, that's heating up uh, through the uh, heater unit there, whatever. By the way, uh, fun, we do fun creative fact. stuff. <laughs> fun fact: uh, we have both been 3D printing for quite a while. I am the least 
technically knowledgeable person. There's probably, there's a whole RIT staff of yeah. students over there with 3D printers. They're probably way more knowledgeable than either of us. <laughs> That's the human block. But <laughs> we just like making fun stuff and making them look good. Yeah. Uh, we also just, I, I, I am becoming very addicted to resin 3D printing. This is something that historically has been extremely expensive. The difference between a resin 3D printer and the other 3D printers that we were just showing you previously, one is printing with a hot piece of, or it's heating up plastic and, and melting it. This is, it's printing with liquid. And you can get really heavily fine detailed prints with these resin 3D printers. And what's really cool is the cost of them have, over the past year or so, come yeah. down drastically in price, and now they're starting to release much larger resin 3D printers that are still pretty expensive. The, the thing you're gonna lose, you do lose with a resin printer is a your consumables, the plastic, the resin, the resin is more expensive. So 500 milliliters of it will cost about 25 bucks. It's it's also much 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 messier to work with and toxic, and the print volumes are very small. So you know you've got a print volume this wide, maybe this long. You're not going to be printing a helmet. You're not going to be printing. You're going to be printing smaller things. But there is now a larger ones. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, thankfully there's now much larger resin 3D printers are are becoming available, and the cost of resin is going yeah. down, which is very cool. But I mean the detail that you can get on these is just ridiculously cool. Uh, we also just wanted to throw something up here for anybody that was again not familiar with 3D printing. There are lots of different types of materials that you can 3D print with, depending on your 3D printer and its capabilities. What do you, I mean, out of this list, are you typically? I mostly print with PLA, because it's easy, temperature's low, it doesn't need a special machine, it doesn't need an enclosure. Uh, I will use PETG, I'm working on some robots I'm printing, like an R2-D2 full size, and it needs a, a stronger material for some of the wheel parts that are in the gears. So I'll use PETG for that. And then the rubber wheels, uh, I use like a flexible filament. So I'll use some different things, but mostly PLA. I uh, pretty much exclusively print with PLA just because it's really cheap to get all of. I think I'm paying like less than $15 for a roll and I can easily print at least a helmet with a yeah. one roll. Most helmets will be one roll. So after you've 3D printed your prop, whether it's a helmet or some armor or uh, a weapon of some sort, maybe it's a sword, typically what will have to happen is you need to glue some components together. So we just have a, a listing here of some cool different materials here that you can use. So this is uh, just showing off the different stuff that we've used. Yeah, I like the, the Bob Smith Industries. You can buy in those big, these big bottles and refill your smaller ones. It, it cures really fast, it's, it's not too liquidy, so it doesn't run as much. Um, it will glue your fingers to a piece of plastic like nobody's business. It's perfect for that. Really good. Fantastic. Yeah. So again, there's just a lot of different um, super glue, for example, different options. There's also accelerators that you can buy that will speed up the cure time of the, the, the super glue when you're trying to bond pieces together. Uh, there's also epoxy, which is going to give you a really strong weld together. And there's also a product specifically made for 3D printing. It's a chemically designed to work with 3D printing and the materials that you're working with. This is 3D glue. This is easily my favorite. It's incredible. It's incredible. And uh, here was an example of this is Cable's gun from Deadpool 2. It's a massive prop that I printed in multiple pieces because it's way too big to print on any 3D printer that I have. And so I was using 3D glue to uh, glue all the parts together. And there's no audio, but that's okay. Basically what I'm saying is, hey, uh, I'm gonna drop this gun. I've glued it together, let's do a drop test, which is, I would never do this normally. <laughs> and uh, so here I'll, I'll drop it, and that's my messy basement here as well. Uh, but this is just going to show how durable this actual glue is. So here you can see it actually broke. But what's cool is that I'm saying in the video is that it didn't break where I glued it. There's other air. The seam where I glued it stayed together. It's the non-glued areas that ended up snapping. So it's, a, again, a really, really cool product that'll allow you to really 
just weld these components together. I think you get the price down. That would be better. <laughs> That's very true. It is a little expensive. Uh, one other component that you're going to want to look at is smoothing out your prints. So once you have everything printed and pieced together, you're going to end up having a little bit of what happens with 3D printed props is you have layer lines. So you'll end up wanting to smooth those out. So typically, these are some of the tools that we use. So I'm a big fan of XTC 3D, also Primer Filler will help fill in some of those gaps. Uh, Bondo Spot Putty is a really cool product. I use, I use the Rust-Oleum, the Primer, and the, the Bondo Spot pretty much exclusively with some regular Bondo. I'm never, I'm not a big fan of the XTC just because it can take detail away. Yeah. If it's a piece that doesn't have any detail, I'll use it, but I've never had much luck with it. The, the wood filler on the end, that is easily the one yeah. that I use most for almost every single one of my props because it just, it dries very quickly. There's no fumes to it. I can use it in the house. I can use it in my workshop. It doesn't bother the family and it sands really quickly. So our, it, it sets up, it dries very quickly, and I can basically get to handing it. And, just and it's it. cheap. I mean, get yeah, it low, really cheap. get it wherever you need to go. Uh, that gets us to our favorite part of all the prop making process, which is sanding. Uh, if, if you've never made anything 3D printed before and you want it to look really smooth, be prepared to sand, 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 do some more sanding and more sanding. And remember, you you are sanding plastic, and it. Dust gets everywhere. I tend to go sit out on the porch outside uh, so I don't get in the shop. And I'm always wearing at least like a really good um, uh, respirator. respirator, not like a full HEPA thing, but at least the white mask uh, pretty tight because you know, you're, it's some fine, it's plastic dust and you don't really want to be breathing that. So that goes for almost anything when you work with this stuff. Yeah, what's, uh, what will end up happening as well is you'll typically want to start with a lower grit. Uh, sandpaper like a hundred or 120 and start yeah. and then work your way up and, and up and up and up and up yeah. I mean it's, it's all depending if you want to end up doing wet sanding as well I mean you can go up into the yeah. 600s and plus or 400s and up with sandpaper levels and apply water and some soap and yeah. continue sanding the red hood helmet that I showed wet sanded thousand grit wet sand so uh, then that gets us to painting as well, which you're much better at finishing your props than I am. I pretty much finish all my stuff. A lot of times people ask me, what color filament do I get? I don't care. The cheapest. I do get uh, Uncle Jesse silver from CL Tech because... Uh, it's technically gunmetal. Gunmetal. He's, he's got a sticker on it and I get that because I like to open the box and see Clay looking up at me, smiling. <laughs> but. Uh, so I do get that, and why actually I like that is because when I sand it, I can see the sand lines a lot better than like uh, white or something like that. And for paints, a lot of people have been asking me, what do I use? Um, I usually use rattle cans. I mean, they're cheap. Uh, you can reuse them. You can get great quality stuff. I use a lot of Krylon. I will use duple color if I'm going to use like a metallic or something shiny like an armor like Iron Man or like Red Hood because it's a car paint. And it has nice metallic flex and things like that. Um, it's a little trickier to use. You gotta make sure you follow the direction to stay back so you're not getting runs. But cheap paint from Lowe's or yeah. uh, Pet Boys. Pet Boys is great, as well as Walmart sells, yeah. has typically really good deals on yeah. paints as well. But I mean, there's lots of metallic options as well. So yeah. it really all depends on what you are looking to make. There's typically eight paints out there. Uh, also, one place that I had not looked up until the ha past handful of months was, I think it's Michael's. Yeah, it has a lot of we different lot of color variations of yeah. paints that I've, I've not have not seen in other places. And, and what you can do too is, believe it or not, it hasn't happened to me as much. I don't know if it's happened to you. Sometimes your prints will fail. It doesn't happen to you. No. And when the prints fail, I save them. Not all of them, because I know just two failed prints. Uh, and I test paints on those to see what's going to happen. Because you, you don't want to have this perfect thing you're ready to, and then you spray paint it, and then you put the clear coat on, and you, you use the wrong clear coat with the wrong paint, and then it bubbles. So I test if I really want to make sure. Um, but you can also use acrylics. So on some of my stuff, like I've been doing a lot of figures lately, and busts and stuff, and I don't feel like airbrushing that, and 
uh, spray paint, I can't, you can't get a lot of detail. So I actually just use cheap basics paints or paints I get at Walmart. And I wash Walmart, it. Walmart has, it's like 70 cents, 80 cents yeah. for a folk art. Yeah, folk art, that's it. Yeah. Acrylic paint, and they have hundreds of different paint yeah. options, and they're great to work with. You can water them down as well. I got, I've got a ton of them. Weathering on yep. your prints. Really great stuff, and then you also, I have like a set of brushes. Yes, I just, every time I go to Walmart or every other time I'll buy one of those cheap packs of brushes and a bunch of chip brushes. Apparently my wife says, and I don't know, you guys tell me if you should, you can wash the brushes and use them more than once? You should be able to. I, I, I don't believe it, but apparently you can. <laughs> Uh, or you can just buy another pack. But um, thankfully, they're pretty cheap. They're pretty cheap. Uh, and then one of the last things I wanted to bring up was it's a very important thing that I'm very bad at doing is clear coating your projects. So you'll want to, after you're done printing and sanding and painting, give it a coat or two of clear coat to give it a protective layer over it because. Inevitably, especially if you're going to a con or traveling to go to a convention or walking around Maker Faire here in, in cosplay, you're going to bump into something and it's going to get dinged up, and this will give it a little bit of protection. Yeah, the key thing with the clear coat is to make sure you're using the right clear coat with the paint you use. Um, especially if you're using like Duplicolor or car paints, um, they might be enamel. So you have to be careful what clear coat you're putting, or you can bubble the paint or run you the can, paint. You can always, typically, if you're if you're going to like a Pep Boys, that's where I picked up my duplicate color coat, clear coat. I asked someone there, yeah. and they they knew immediately which one I needed. Yeah. Uh, also, I typically tend to, if I'm spray painting, I will uh, if I'm using Rust-Oleum spray paints, I'll use Rust-Oleum clear coat. Yeah, as long as you stay in the family, you're usually you're usually good. Uh, also, there is a big warning that I wanted to call out about 3D printing is that it's extremely addictive. Uh, it is. I think it's the fumes, the yeah. plastic fumes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you will end up, at least for me, Kevin's great at finishing his problem. I start things and immediately will start working on something else before I even begin finishing another project. Yeah, what you can't see in any of my videos is the other part of my shop that has uh, stacks of Tupperware filled with unfinished things. But not to that extent. I, I think I have a, uh, there's a Batman helmet down there that's in red. I think I have a full suit printed. You do, you I've showed it to never, me. I've never assembled, I don't think I ever made a video, I've never showed anything. <laughs> not really great with uh, finishing these things. Uh, but we also wanted to just flash this up here. There are a number of great resources online for finding files. There's um, uh, 3D file sources like Thingiverse and My Mini Factory are free, for the most part, that you can go and find files to download. Uh, there's also places like CG Trader that you can buy files, as well as on Patreon, there are so many amazing 3D designers making and sharing their content through Patreon. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it allows you to support designers or makers in their projects that they're working. We have some of the artists off to the side listed. Yeah, if you go to my table, 90% of the stuff on that table is made by Colonius, Yuri, uh, Jeff, uh, and TO3D. But like the the three on top are Patreon people. There are people that just, they, they learn how to model, they do incredible work, you give them I think Yuri's is like you give them a buck a month or five bucks a month. A buck or five bucks. And you have access to hundreds of amazing files that they continually Constantly, update. Yeah, continually coming out with yeah, files. And a lot of these guys also, or a lot of these folks have, um, are also have files listed on Thingiverse and My Mini Factory that yeah. are free to download. Yep. And then they have this other offshoot where there's additional files or um, other options, variations of some of the files yeah. that you can download. Yep. Um, but one of the last things that we just want to mention everybody is share your projects. Take photos, post those online, make videos of them. You don't have to go and make huge elaborate YouTube videos like this guy does right here. Um, but you can, you can make and share these things online with other makers so that they can learn about what you're doing or find other people in the area that are making 
I was so excited when I found out there was another maker doing 3D printing stuff in the area that I was able to collaborate with. So it's, it's, a, it's a very exciting thing. There's huge communities online that you can leverage as well. And that's, that's where you're going to really learn the most. I mean, whenever I am stuck in a project, I go on YouTube and check out everyone's videos. I go on the RPF, Replica Prop Forum, which is, you know, the Bible. And you can just you just learn so much from people and what they do and can solve so many problems. It's fantastic. Great. Great. All right. Um, I think that is brings us to the end of our, our presentation. I just want to say thank you guys for sitting in there and listening to us talk about 3D printing and cosplay. Maybe hopefully it wasn't uh, overly, overly boring. <laughs> Um, if you guys have any questions for us, feel free to meet us up at the front of the stage and we can help answer questions. Uh, we've got a few minutes before the... Uh, actually, sorry, it's, it's starting in... We'll go off to the side here and answer questions as they are getting ready for the cosplay contest. I thought that was at 3.30. It's 3.30. All right, so that was our talk at Maker Fair. Again, I had a super fun time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be setting up whenever they have those. Because the people are great, the the organizer great, and it's just a it's just a fun time. So what am I going to be working on in a bunch of upcoming videos? Well, I'm going to get back to finishing up some cosplays that I haven't finished that I've been really really working on, like Rorschach, because I've been loving this new Watchmen series that's on HBO. Some other cosplays I've got in the pipe, but I'm also going to be working on a lot of resin printing and doing figures. Uh, I love resin printing figures and I found some amazing communities that I want to share with you guys where I've been getting these files. The other thing I'm going to be working on a lot is files that I've created myself uh, such as like Jack Knight's staff for like from Starman and some different pistols and guns and even helmets. So I'm super excited about the videos coming up and you know I love doing this and I hope you enjoy watching it. So again if you could like, subscribe, hit that little bell, check out the description for any of the links. I've got one down there for the Elgu Mars. It's an affiliate link. It is by far my favorite printer I'm using right now. Just, I love the detail. So again, thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.